Okay, one thing you might want to do is you might want to uh, control evaluation or control flow somehow. So a simple example is, uh, for instance, you would you could potentially implement if this way. So let me try to write it down. Um, you define a macro system that is doing an if, but if is defined in terms of and and or. Um, and I can check if it works. Um, and it does work. So now if I do if, uh, remember in the beginning, uh, in the previous lesson, right in the beginning of the semester, we talked about how the difficulty of implementing if, right? The problem is that uh, you want to only evaluate the then or the else branch once you know the result of condition. So you evaluate the first one and then according to its result, you either evaluate the second or the, ther the third term. Um, so for this, you can't use a function call, a regular function call, unless you wrap the then and else branch in, inside lambdas. So with the define macro, you could actually encode very simply um, in terms of or and end uh, an if. So the example I'm showing you here is just how to, to encode such a macro. Um, another example you might want to define is, for instance, racket doesn't have um, an assert. So for instance, if you want to, uh, let's say you want to write an assert, which is just a condition that when the condition fails, um, it returns, it should break the execution. So let's assert false. Uh, so what happens here is um, line 57 is breaking, although record doesn't tell you which line, um, but this is where. So this is another example where I'm the, um, creating control flow. Uh, of course, this couldn't be done with, um, ah, why is this interesting? Okay, so let me actually write why you need a macro, right? So the first thing you may ask, okay, so why don't I just define um, assert version two, which takes an X and uh, just returns, if X is true, then return void, otherwise, um, otherwise rain it, raise an error condition failed. Right, and you can even pass X to it. Okay, so if I do, if I call this assertion instead, I should see condition failed and I see false. Okay, so, so far they seem equivalent. Why aren't they the same? Why do you need a macro to rate an, an assert? Here's why you might want to write a whole expression. So let me say that uh, two is a smaller than zero, which is false, of course. So this Mac, this will fail. However, because assert now is a function, it means that you just get false, right? So you don't know what's being, what failed. Um, if I write my assert, however, uh, because it is a macro and you're copy pasting the code, uh, you can actually write uh, assert of two zero. And the nice thing about it is that you can see the condition that failed. Okay, so how is that possible? Notice I'm calling if, if uh, x is true, then return void, otherwise raise an error. Uh, notice what I'm doing with x, I'm writing quote. So I'm serializing that AST as quote, uh, which is great because it means I can take just the source code and print it out. Something I cannot do with a function. Okay, it's the main importance of, uh, this is something you can only do with a macro, you cannot do this with a function. Right? You cannot print the code of that function. Okay, so I showed you why you need a macro. Another thing you might want to do is, let's say you want to define a let. We say, I want to define this variable x, assign it to v, and put the result available in e. Uh, you can do that with this expression where you call a function and you have a lambda. Um, so that's another case. It just simplifies a certain use case. Uh, as we saw before, actually in macros, you cannot use define, so you would have to use something like this. Um, another thing you might want to do is you might want to add uh, types to macros. And, and this is only the objective is to, to make um, the error message a bit more descriptive, as I will show you in, in a second. So let, let me give you an example. Um, 
So let's say I want to write uh, a function. I want to write a new syntax for a function. Okay, so if I, if I write it like this, I need to stop the condition, the assert, otherwise my code doesn't work. Okay. Okay, so now it's not printing out garbage. Um, and what I can see here, what did I do? Well, I used another way to define a macro, which is called define simple macro. Uh, and the only thing it's doing is whenever you, you call fn, not fn is declaring a lambda with a different syntax. So because um, in this case, it's just because lambda is too long and I don't want to add, add the parentheses. So why not just create a macro that simplifies the creation or, or the the syntax of a, of a lambda that only takes one parameter with fn. So that's what I did. I created this uh, simple macro uh, that simply returns a lambda with the x in the parameter and body as the body. So as an example, I called fn of xx and I passed it 10, so it should return 10, and the test passed, which means it worked. Um, so now the interesting part is because this is a macro, uh, this x could be anything, so I can actually do f10, 10, 10. So there's no restriction what is going to happen is that it's going to take whatever code I write, uh, it could even be plus a 10 plus 1. As you know, this is not evaluated, so this code is replaced inside the lambda. So you will get a weird error, right? What you will get is um, this, right? It's saying lambda, not an identifier. Um, so if I'm defining fn and here appears some lambda, it's not very obvious. I would have to know what fn is doing to be able to understand why why there's a 10 plus 1 appearing inside the lambda, right? I would have to understand, I would have to look at the source code of this macro to figure out this, to understand this error, which is undesirable, right? Essentially, whenever we define something like a function, we want it to be encapsulated. We just want to reason about it uh, without looking at its source code. Um, and this macro is failing this principle. So how can we improve it? We can improve it with this um, simple macro uh, where we can attach um, some keywords that say, well, this is, it has to be an identifier and this other thing has to be an expression. So for instance, I could write ID and this expert. And now, as you can see, the error message is going to be different. It's going to say, function expecting an identifier at uh, 10 plus 1. So here, exactly where you would expect the error to be. So um, in Racket, you basically have a library to define macros, so a level of top of, ma of macros, to make, um, to simplify the error uh, expression, and in this case, by means of some notion of types, right? Where you say, this parameter has to be an identifier, and this parameter has to be a body, uh, an expression, sorry. Uh, and this is why you would want to do so, such a thing. Um, another thing you can do is you can actually add some syntactic sugar and mark it as such. So I could even write, I want to do a little arrow, and I can do this by uh, tilt literal, and then I can add a little arrow, uh, which means now I would have to write it like this. And uh, the macro system allows for that as well, which is nice. You know, usually you want to have some uh, delimiters explaining what something is and is not. Uh, so this this uh, defined simple macro is quite powerful. It lets you control, adds a bit of syntactic sugar and control over what kind of parameters are being used. Uh, another thing you can do with yet another way of defining macros, which is the syntax rules. Uh, is what we use in the um, in our do notation. So what we're doing here is actually uh, ignore this for a moment. When we write syntax rules, what we're saying is the parameters are going to be given as a list, and we're going to do um, pattern matching on them. So the list is here. Sorry, uh, 
Uh, the first thing is the name of the macro, in this case, do. So I'm discarding it, so therefore the underscore. Uh, and then what you see on the right-hand side, so it, it will be the parameters. So in this case, if I just give it a single expression, return that expression. If I have a var arrow m expression rest, then I create all that. There's one thing that is important here is to say that you can describe uh, rest dot 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 to represent um, zero or more terms being passed to this macro, which is why our do notation works uh, with multiple. And then you can refer to them by, in this case, we're expanding the rest dot 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 in a recursive call to do. Um, so then the difference between the first example and the second example is that in the second example we're, do a, we're doing a bind and we're ignoring the parameter. So we can just use underscore and lambda and everything should work as before. So the, the second, uh, the, the third rule is just a special case of the first rule. And the only two rules that matter are this one. So if, if you're in the base case, you only have one expression, you return it. Otherwise, um, you have a bind. So yeah, this is a, a very powerful way of defining macro systems or macro rules. Uh, in the next video, I want to cover homework assignment seven. Um,